Hi, this is Ryan Lawler. I'm here with TechCrunch TV at the Pre-Money Conference. I'm here with Mark Sister uh, with his new brand, Upfront Ventures. Upfront Ventures. So, uh, used to be GRP Partners, yes. um, now Upfront Ventures. Tell me a little bit about why you decided to sort of make the make the change? Well, the first is uh, our name GRP partners fell foul of what they call RAS syndrome. Do you know what RAS syndrome is? Uh, no. <laughs> Redundant acronym syndrome syndrome. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know, it's like ATM machine. Right, right, right. GRP partners. Right. GRP stood for global retail partners. Okay. Right? So it's global retail partners. Partners. partners right. Um, it was a fine brand. Uh, my partners who started the firm uh, Eve Sisteron and Stephen Dietz mm -hmm. um, had worked in the retail sector in the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, they made some very successful investments in the retail sector, very early stage in Costco, Starbucks, Dick's mm -hmm. Sporting Goods, Jamba Juice, uh, uh, and, and number of players. And uh, so when they started a venture fund, the philosophy in 1996 was uh, retail's moving online right. and we need to invest in online players. Right. Well, even if you look back at our 96 fund, we did tech, we right, did right. Overture, which right. was the you know predecessor to Google in many ways. Uh, you know, we did City Search, which was a predecessor to Yelp in many ways. We did CyberSource, you know, security company. Um, and then fast forward to the 2000 fund, we did Bill Me Later, which was a billion dollar exit in Baltimore. We did Dealer Track, which is mm -hmm. tech for financial services in the auto sector, which was more than a billion dollar exit. Mm -hmm. So we had all these tech companies and, you know, it, it, GRP partners didn't really represent where we were going. Okay. Going forward. Okay. So what's, uh, so as you pick this brand, like what was important? For it, like, what were you looking for? Like, what are the sort of tenants that you wanted upfront to represent for well, the firm? When you think about '96 and and frankly, even through 2005, there wasn't the funded. Mm -hmm. You know, TechCrunch didn't exist. There wasn't easy access to information, so you didn't really know who the VCs were and how to approach them. Right. But we live in an era of transparency, mm -hmm. and people want to know who you are and what you stand for. So we thought we want to be transparent. We want to put out information that you know how we operate. Uh, you know, our brand. You know, we're really, uh, you know, have strong points of view, and we're willing to debate people. Right. So we kind of thought WYSIWYG was the right message, and I think WYSIWYG.com was taken. So right, right, right. WYSIWYG being what you see is what you <laughs> right, get. Right, yeah. right. And uh, Upfront is the best representation of that. And the fact that the overwhelming majority of our investments are seed and mm -hmm. A mm -hmm. kind of made it fit, right? We do Upfront investments and we're Upfront as our character. Okay. So the new brand also comes with a new $200 million fund. It does. Um, tell me about sort of what your plans are, you know, for investment as, you know, you look back on the last fund, which was what, 2008? 2008. And, uh, you know, what you plan to do going forward? So I, I would say it's more of the same. Mm -hmm. We invest in early stage, as I said, so upfront ventures. Um, we invest in tech-enabled businesses, so we don't do things that aren't tech. We do tech-enabled businesses. Um, you know, we have some special specialties. We uh, we do a lot in financial services. We mm -hmm. do a lot of retail innovation, so tech supporting the retail sector, given mm -hmm. our history. Mm -hmm. We're based in LA, so we do a lot of media-enabled technology. Right particularly around video. Mm -hmm. But we also do a lot of software and SaaS companies. I mean, that's sure. my background. I okay. was I sold my company to salesforce.com. I was VP of products there. And uh, so we do a lot of that. We have a national practice, mm -hmm. uh, but we invest more than half of our fund in LA. Okay, so tell me about the LA part in that ecosystem um, and what you're doing there, uh, sure. what you've been doing there and how you carry that forward. Well, I think the thing I would say to you about LA is uh, if you go back 10 years, there weren't second time and third time entrepreneurs like you have in Silicon Valley. You know, right. Silicon Valley, you've had entrepreneurs for 45 years. Right. In LA, you had entrepreneurs, but they weren't in the tech sector. Right. But if you look at the late 90s to call it 2005, 2006, again, I mentioned Overture, right. uh, other companies we didn't back but are in town, you had. Uh, uh, Fast click, and you had value click, and you had commission junction, you had lower my bills, and price grabber, and applied semantics, and a number of very successful startups. Then you had the wave of social media, and mm -hmm. we had MySpace. Right. And MySpace was, I think, a $550 million exit or something like that. Each of these companies produced second time entrepreneurs, right. the people who were VP the first time and wanted to be CEO the next time. So 
you know, if you look at MySpace, they spun out 11 companies. Right. One of which we backed. It's a company called Gravity, led mm -hmm. by Amit Kapoor. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second thing that you have, Fred Wilson called it recycled capital. Mm -hmm. Recycled capital. So if you were Gil Elbaz and you sold Applied Semantics for $106 million to Google right. pre-IPO, right. Uh, you probably have a bit of capital yourself. And guys like Gil have been very active in writing checks in our community. Guys like Evan Rifkin, who's mm -hmm. on his fourth startup, writing checks back into the industry. So you've got a lot more angel money. You've got a lot more experienced VP, v, uh, VPs who became CEOs. And then the third thing that's really important is that if you look at 1995 to 2005, it was mostly infrastructure, mm -hmm. routers, switches, browsers, uh, caching software, you name it. Mm -hmm. But now the layer above infrastructure is becoming more important. Content, communication, and commerce. Right. And that's an area that LA excels at. Okay, excellent. And you're opening a new office we are. there. Um, when does that sort of open up and uh, you know, what's it going to be like? It was a big move also because mm -hmm. we've been in our current offices for 17 years. Okay. Uh, we're in Century City now, right. and Century City's probably most known for the home of CAA. Right, so right. we get to see a lot of celebs coming and going, and, and all of our friends who are agents across the street from us. We also are connected with Fox Lot, so we're right, actually right. across the street from the lot. And we're in Nakitoma Plaza, if you remember from Die Hard. Did you right, see Die right, Hard? right, yeah, 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 yeah great course. movie. So Nakitoma Plaza, we're in Nakitoma right, right, Plaza. Right, right. Um, but it just turns out the startups aren't around, right, <laughs> around yeah. us. And you know, there's a movement, and the movement is towards more urban startups. And the reason right. is, I mean, urban in terms of the startups themselves being in right. kind of more of a city feel. And there's a reason for that is, as we went from companies raising $5 million for their A round, and mm -hmm. the, most of the founders being in their early 30s and probably married and about to have a kid, most founders these days are in the kind of 24 to 30 range, mm -hmm. and they want to live where they want to live. And because right. they need to raise less money, they're able to get capital. So we've seen the rise of Soma instead right, right, of right. Silicon Valley and right, Menlo right. Park and, and Palo Alto. We've seen the rise of Cambridge and Back Bay in Boston area. Sure. Uh, it used to be in the UK, if you got funded, you were in what's called the Thames Corridor, which is about 25 minutes west of London. Now all the startups are in Shoreditch, which is East London. Right. Uh, startups are going now where young people want to live, and in LA that's Santa Monica, and it's right. really Santa Monica stretching down to Venice, so mm -hmm. I would include sure. both of those. We needed to be in that zone. Right, right. So, uh, but you're you're actually not on like the Third Street Promenade, like a lot of startups. Yeah. Um, where where exactly are you going to be located? And so we are. Uh, it's thirteen fourteen Seventh Street. Okay. It's between Sixth and Seventh, and mm -hmm. if anyone knows LA, between Arizona and Santa Monica. Okay. It's three and a half blocks off the Promenade, but I would say this is my challenge to all LA startups. If we were going to build a startup community in San Francisco, right. you wouldn't put it at Fisherman's Wharf, right? Because right, right. you've got all the tourists there. And I don't think the right place for the startup community is the Third Street Promenade, because it's the Fisherman's Wharf equivalent of Santa Monica. And so I believe people start to pull east. We've already seen that a bit. You right. have Cross Campus that's a bit further away. You have Mucker Lab, which is mm -hmm. a bit further away. I believe people pull east. The rents will be cheaper. You, you have less kind of tourist traffic around you. And they're starting to build up hotels and restaurants and everything. So I have to, I mean, we signed a 10 year lease. Right, right, right. One and a half million dollar refurbishment project. Right, like right. we're all in on this. Right. And I have to project where the community's going. And I think it's heading east. Okay, excellent. Well, good luck with Thank all you. of that. And uh, thanks for being with us. Appreciate it.